<laughs> Thank you so much, Yaz, for coming on. I am so happy to have you back on to the podcast. Um, I just love how we first met and we literally are now like besties. That's why I call you Yaz instead of Yasmin Elzamore. Um, <laughs> oh, I love you. <laughs> but I just, I think it's really been cool to to just as, as friends, we've, we've gotten so close and it's been almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you were like one of my first guests on the podcast oh when God. it started. That's true. And I, I reached out to you, did I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I forget how you found me. I think it was Kevin Crenshaw, Kevin. the heart guy. Yes. 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 That's how so I, I think you, he, yeah. I had him and then you came on. And I think you were the next guest. Cause at that point right. I was so new that I was just pulling on people like <laughs> trying to come to my come new podcast. <laughs> I only have, I think Kevin was like the ninth episode. Um, right. So yeah. Yeah. And wow. Like, so I was one of the OGs. I was one of the oh, newbies. You're an OG girl. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I just love the fact that we just, we bonded and we realized later that like we're soul sisters we've been together in many lives and um we felt that we had that immediate connection what people don't know is we talked for I don't know like another hour after the podcast like we talked yeah yeah and it was it was a a, it it was such a bond because it was such a personal you know conversation that we were having after and I was like wait I don't I don't remember having this with anyone (laughs) Like, this is like one of the first times I can actually connect, you know, with another woman um, and feel so seen and understood. So that to me meant the world. So I just wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. That's what I love about what we have is because it's so just from the beginning, it was like trust didn't necessarily need to be earned. We kind of just knew each other and knew, um, knew like that we could trust it was just a safe feeling and I think that's so important and it's rare um, to feel that it is our souls knew each other and I like it's so funny because I even told Brad that I was like oh my god like I I met a soul sister and he knows (laughs) when I meet soul sisters he's like oh yeah I could tell like you're (laughs) (laughs) she's glowing in a way she hasn't glowed in a while (laughs) (laughs) like yes I'm meeting my tribe (laughs) and that's so needed right and that's that's been like I don't know how long I've I've prayed for you (laughs) seriously seriously I always say that I always say that you and Rita and Sarah you guys came like into my life at the perfect time and I've noticed in the past year I've really let go of so many like friendships and people in my life that no longer resonate with me and it like it really like took a toll on me because I was like you know ouch this hurts you know losing other friends and you know, just separating and dr- drifting apart from people that you were once really close to and then feeling like, am I ever going to have a bond, you know, like that again, and yeah. kind of doubting, like if you're going to meet your soul tribe or people that understand you, and then mm-hmm. you guys come into my life, literally individually, which is the craziest part. Mm-hmm. And just at random time periods. And we all just decided like, wait a second. <laughs> I was like, hold on. There's one common denominator with all these lovely ladies. And that would be Yasmin, <laughs> the super connector, attractor. Yes. But connector of women. Yes. So it's my it's my third house stellium. I love it. <laughs> it so is though. <laughs> it's that networking energy of like, hey, let's all Straight get together up. and like create. <laughs> Straight up. And we all felt it. Like and, and I just it was funny because my individual conversations with Sarah and Rita were the same. Like I feel so connected. I feel like I've known you forever. And and I was like, hold on. I've had this conversation now like three times. (laughs) was so like, "Mm, I think there's something there because every time too, they'd be like, yeah, I love Sarah and I love Yasmin. And, And so it'd be like, you know, either way. And it was just so funny. It was like, okay, well, um, we should all like, we should all connect <laughs> like together <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> at the same time should happen. And it did. And it's been beautiful. And, um, my mom, my mom is even so thrilled and so happy for me. She's, she knows it's been like years in the <laughs> years struggling with women and like, not to yeah. mention relationships, but also women. And it's like, oh, yeah, there's, yeah. it's just been hard. So I love it. 
I love it. It feels so good. It's so refreshing to find that and to find like other women that just like their sisters, I get you, you know, that want to grow with you, that want to help you and watch you succeed and be there for you and support you, you know, and that to me is like a hundred percent, like that safety net that I've always searched for. And I'm like, I have it now. I'm so grateful. Like I literally did pray for that. Yep. And zero jealousy. Yes. That is so important. That is so important. That is such a big piece, (laughs) but knowing that you have a squad of of girls that like they, you could tell them like what you're up to, what you're doing. And they'll be like, Oh my God, how can I support you? You know, like, or I'm so excited for you, or this is so huge. Like you're going to, you're going to make it far. Like that to me is everything, like Mm -hmm. everything. And I'm so happy that we have that with each other. Yeah. Me too, girl. Me too. So mm-hmm. what's awesome is we get to have another conversation on the Soulish <laughs> podcast. And yet it's, um, it's going to be a bit more deep because we have relationship and trust. And I just want to first thank you for just agreeing to talk about your journey that you've recently experienced and this um, process of shedding, of becoming something new, of going through a dark night of the soul, because I think it's, it's something that you don't see often with people. Like people don't technically promote the Mm -mm. shit storm that happens in their life and the really difficult, like dealing with so many things, you know, and like painful background memories or repressed memories or things that are coming up that are just like, all the shadow work. Right. And so we don't necessarily always talk about that because it's not always glamorous. And I do know that I see a lot of people too. They, they, if anything, they probably glorify the dark night of the soul process and they, it's beyond just owning it. It's like, Oh, like I'm more spiritual because I went through a dark night of the soul. And right. I just love how honest you are with the process and you've been so like honest, just even on a friend level, but um, even just with, with your community. And I've just watched that and gone, wow, she, she's like shepherding her own community through her own process and still remaining present, still remaining present and, um, and seen and, and keeping up those connections and, Mm -hmm. and staying involved, but yet you did take time for yourself and you did set a new set of boundaries to protect yourself in the process that you were in and to steward the process that you're in. Absolutely. So I just want to say, thank you for sharing this because it's so valuable. I Um, love you. So many people are going to benefit from you sharing this. And so I'm just (laughs) really excited for that because that's going to help people who have really struggled. Um, Thank you, my love, for saying that. I really, really appreciate that because I I completely agree with the fact that like no one really talks about these these dark moments and it's really hard to talk about these things. And I get that, especially so publicly on social media and like to other people that you might not fully trust yet. So it is really difficult, but there comes like a time where when you do that, it becomes so healing, not just for other people, but for yourself to be able to see the story like play out and be able to transmute that into power and give other people that same power that you're experiencing you know so that to me is a lot and like that's what I today with with our recording I'm just like I'm so excited to dive in because this is going to be so healing and that's the intention the intention is always to to heal it's always to grow it's always to be a healthier better version of yourself and that's ultimately the goal so mm-hmm. yeah, I'm just really excited. And, and the full moon is in Scorpio. So hey. <laughs> it's going to be in Scorpio soon. So. <laughs> so I think we're all feeling intense energy and like, what better way to describe Scorpio than dark night of the soul, right? <laughs> and death and rebirth and transformation and all that stuff. So yep. um, yeah, this is like a really great timing. Divine. It's super great timing as far mm-hmm. as this recording goes. And yeah. yeah. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Couldn't sure, have picked so. it better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love that. Do you want to begin with kind of the beginning of the process? Like how you, yeah. how you were feeling at the beginning and how you, how you kind of navigated that when you started realizing, okay, there's like a surmounting, you know, of overwhelm and anxiety and having panic attacks too. You were experiencing a lot of things. Yeah, for sure. So my journey, it's so funny how I remember like every little thing. 
<laughs> from the date to like what I was watching and all that stuff. So the whole journey started, um, it actually started on December 21st, 2020. So, which is, it was a very big day for all of us, <laughs> the yes. junction. So yes. that night I had a, like at 3 a.m. I woke up in the middle of a, of a panic attack and it was really intense. Wow. And I was like, so weird. Like I don't normally get panic attacks. You know, I, I get the normal type of anxiety, but never to that extent. And so I was like, this is really strange. Like what's going on, you know? And I, I, I thought about it. And obviously my overthinking brain went into like anxiety mode of like, oh my God, am I dying? Am I sick? Like what's going on? And um, I, I kind of chalked it up to like stress, burnout. I was doing so much in 2020. I was obviously the state of the world is not, was, was not helping at the time. Um, and that night, my sister-in-law was also in labor. She was giving birth. So I was like, okay, that there's probably a connection there. And there's just a lot going on. So I was like, I'm probably just really stressed and anxious and whatever, no big deal. So I, that panic attack really shook me up. I couldn't really go back to bed until like literally 6 a.m. I went back to sleep and I got like a few hours and I woke up and I was like, that really like created like a mark in my heart. And I don't know how to explain that, but it was almost like the start of something. Like that's mm -hmm. how it felt in my soul. I was like, there's something here. And it's underlying and I don't, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something that is like warning me of something, like something intuitive is going on. So I was like, whatever, I'll just let it play out. And you know, the week, the weeks went on and I was like, no, I didn't have any more panic attacks. I was feeling fine. I was actually feeling great. You know, I was like getting into like creating a, a mood board for 2021 for my career, for the things I wanted to do and for my new ideas that I wanted to put into place. Like I was planning on doing all of, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now, I was planning on, you know, having that out in January. And, um, you know, I was just being my creative self, my manifesting generator self, <laughs> just like trying to figure things out and put things together. And on January 16th, um, that day was actually a very great day for me. Like that morning, I saw one of my um, childhood friends that I haven't seen in such a long time. And we just, we connected. I went to her place. We had like a dance party and I was just feeling really, really happy. I was just feeling really good, really grounded, really excited about life overall. I'm, I'm someone who's always very excited about life, very passionate mm -hmm. about living and very peppy all the time. Very always connected. Happy very connected to, you know, myself, to God, you know, always, always, like I always, and I pride myself on that so much. And, um, that night I come home and I'm, I'm feeling, I, I had like a tub of cookie dough <laughs> I <love my> <laughs> and I was oh, just I like, love I'm it. treating myself. And I was just like, I'm having a really great day. Nothing <laughs> can get in my way tonight. <laughs> 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 plot twist and I am sitting on my couch <laughs> I'm watching Avatar which is so funny oh my gosh and I love that movie I know I know I love it I haven't watched them in so long so that night I decided I just decided to put it on I don't know what led me to that but I was like I just want to watch Avatar so I was watching Avatar and towards the end of the movie nothing obviously nothing triggered like for me to have a panic attack but I started yeah. to feel weird symptoms like I just felt really like detached from my body and I was like, my, my hands were tingling, my feet were tingling. And I was, I felt really, really, really weird. And I had like this impending doom, like this, like, you know, like I felt mm -hmm. like my, my, my chest was like clenching and I was like, I can't breathe. Like what's going on with me. And I was just like freaking out. I was freaking out. I was just like, oh my God, I don't know like what's going on with me. Like what the hell is this? And then I realized after I was like, oh my God, did I just have another panic attack? Cause it felt like the one that I had on December 21st at night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, what was that again? What's going on? You know? And I'm like, okay, now it's like really like affecting me at this point. Cause it's like, I don't know what's going on and I need to know, I need to have answers. You know, I'm not, I'm not great at surrendering. So, <laughs> so for me, it's like, I need to know what's, what's happening. Who um, is man? Who is yeah, good at surrendering? Like, <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus? I'm> <laughs> literally because because I'm just like okay no this is this is really hard work but um that night I was just like okay what just happened it took me a while to calm down and then I was a little bit afraid to go to bed because I was like I don't want to have I don't want to feel this way again and I was like on alert my body was still like you know coming mm -hmm. down from that attack and I'm like oh this feels terrible and I immediately immediately remembered that I had the same exact scenario play out when I was 21 years old 
I was on the same, I was on the same couch in the same spot, watching the same TV, <laughs> watching a different movie, but I had a panic attack that, that night as well. And, um, that was the beginning of my first dark night at 21. And then I thought about this one and I'm like, Oh my God. And I knew it immediately. I knew that it wasn't something physical. I knew I was like, this is, this is deeper. There's a spiritual root to this. There's an energetic root to this. Um, but I'm going to go get checked and I'm going to go to the doctor anyway to rule out any of the physical, you know, deficiencies that might be playing out because I'm not hundred percent sure. So I did that. I, I went to the doctor and they told me you're fine. Everything's great. Like you're healthy. You know, you have like some low vitamin D levels, which I'm in New York. I mean, and the doctor's like, but everyone has that. And COVID. So, COVID. And it, I got prescribed vitamin D too. <laughs> yeah, we, we all literally were not going out. And I had like some, some high cholesterol, but nothing in, insane, you know, nothing that was like, oh, this is definitely leading to your panic attacks or your depression. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was just like, okay, this is, uh, I guess this is going to be just a journey of getting back on track with my diet and my health and my fitness. Cause in 2020, I completely threw all of that out the window, you know, and I think we can all agree that it was hard for us to work out. Like we were in survival mode, you know, so <laughs> we were just really trying to survive and deal with like what we were given. And, um, I like stopped working out. I stopped taking care of myself. I was just like taking care of people, clients back and forth. I worked for, um, a suicide hotline, you know, so that was all a lot, a lot that I was taking on and that I was not, I wasn't giving myself time and space and setting the boundary that I needed in order to feel healthy, in order to be able to give yeah. back to the people that I was like taking care of and helping. And I, 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 but in 2020, I didn't realize that, you know, I was just like, whatever, no big deal. I'm fine. I can do this. I'm superwoman, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need any help. And, um, yeah, I got to this place where I'm just like, okay, now I really have to look after myself because clearly there's something here and it's, it's just, my body is just telling me like the anxiety was just telling me that something needs to be done. You know, there is, this is a symptom of something deeper. Yeah. And, um, you know, weeks after, like, I guess probably like three weeks after my initial panic attack, that month of January, I'm telling you, <laughs> January, Rough. February, woo, that Rough. was just like, that was in the midst of the dark night of the soul. Truly. That was, I was like rock bottom. Like I could not, I went days without really eating. Um, I was, I started to lose weight, um, which, you know, I have lost some weight. It's so interesting. Like I lost like 20 pounds, which is like weird, <laughs> but in that time period I did. I From lost where? Weight. That's what I want to know. <laughs> From where? <laughs> I lost some of my booty. I gotta get that. <laughs> like, okay, it's like, that's, like that's like five-ish <laughs> pounds. Where else? <laughs> I love I it. some of my belly pouch too. I was just like, okay, okay, that I could lose a little bit. That's cool. I wanted to lose that a little bit. <laughs> just start pushing things down and back yes. into your butt. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, I can't even, I can't even eat. I was having trouble just like sleeping. I was just like, I had, I literally, the, there was this one day that I specifically remember in the like two weeks after I had my initial panic attack and I was in Target. It's so funny because I was with my parents and I was with my niece and thankfully I was with people. So I wasn't all alone. I was afraid of being alone <laughs> the month mm -hmm. of January. So I was with my parents a lot and I was just <laughs> with yeah. like family. I tried to really be with family and I, you know, tried to really be, be with Brad a lot. And, um, I was, I was in Target and I remember I started to feel like the wave of a panic attack coming on in the middle of the store. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. Like I can't even be present with my niece, you know? And obviously a little three-year-old, like she wants to play and she wants to do. And, yeah. you know, she's like telling me, auntie, auntie, come here. I want to do this. And I'm just like, you know, like she's seeing me really like tense and stressed. And that broke my heart also, of course, because I'm trying to be there for her. And I'm just there like, oh my God, this is driving me nuts. Like I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And on the way back home, I told my mom, like, I'm just, I'm not feeling well. I really want to go home. So we were on the way back home and in the car, like I started to feel like my chest was like so compressed. It was like, I literally had to go to urgent care because I thought I was having a heart attack. Like it was that intense. I was like, I have never, ever had to do this, like ever had to go through something like this before, like this kind of scare. And I was just, I was terrified because I was like, oh my God, this is, this is more intense than my first dark night of the soul at 21. <laughs> you know, like I was like, and that was an intense ride too, but this one felt like 
whoa, this really like knocked the wind out of me, truly did. And I had days during that time period where I felt euphoric and happy and like really calm and moments of bliss and gratitude. And I would cry tears of joy sometimes for like the connections that I had with God and moments where I felt that complete disconnect to God. Like I was not connected. Like I wasn't connected to myself, to my spirituality. And that, that shattered me the most. Um, because that's something, like I said, I pride myself on that so much. And when I didn't have that connection, I just felt like, whoa, I feel worthless. I feel like there's no point in living, you know? And I really got to that point. That's when I got to that point of like, I don't even want to live anymore, you know? And like, that's one part of the dark night that I feel like a lot of people feel really uncomfortable talking about, but it's a very common piece of that. And I do want to like speak about that because that's, you know, it's so taboo, suicide and suicidal ideation, suicidal thoughts, those, those things are so taboo and people feel so uncomfortable talking about it. But I think all of us to one extent or another feel hopelessness. We all feel sometimes that desire to not want to be on this planet anymore. You know, even if we don't go through with, you know, harming ourselves or doing anything, we still have thoughts. We still have intrusive thinking. We still have things that we think about that might be a little bit dark that are hidden in the in the depths of yeah. our mind and that we feel uncomfortable talking about because we feel we might be judged you know and a lot of that also comes from um the fact that you know if you're if you're raised in a religious background which i was it comes from that idea of like oh you're you know you're sinning if you think about things mm -hmm. like that you know how dare you you know but that's what makes us human is that we do feel that spectrum of all those thoughts and emotions and yeah. when we can accept that that's the premise of shadow work you know so it was hard for me to really come to terms with that, with that idea of like, I can't believe I'm thinking that right now. Like it was almost like there was a shame tied to it for me. There yeah. was a shame of like, I, I'm thinking that I don't want to live anymore. Like what's wrong with me? I'm, I have everything I, I like I could ever ask for. I have an incredible family, amazing friends. I have things that nobody, nobody can ever have that I have. And what's wrong with me? You know? And I felt like I was like going in this negative cycle of, blaming myself for feeling that way and then just it, it like it was the cycle I felt like I couldn't get out of and it, it really like it shattered me it shattered me so much I, I took like all of January February dealing with that dealing with that dark cloud it felt like a dark cloud was like constantly over me constantly and I felt so powerless I felt like I can't get out of this you know my creativity was so stagnant I I, I felt like I had lost that my, my passion, my desire for life completely gone. Like everything, I saw everything in like gray, you know, everything was so colorless to me. And um, I just felt like I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was like a complete and total <laughs> mess those two months. That was a crazy, crazy time period. And I remember telling you about it because I was just yeah. like in the depths of it, like, whoa, this feels this is nuts. This is really nuts because it's like, there's, there's, I feel like I'm dead. I really did feel like I was, I was dead. So mm -hmm. it was such a crazy time period and like those ups and downs and like, there were moments of clarity and peace. And I'm like, Oh, this is what I love feeling. These moments is what I live for. And then it would go kind of go back to bam fear and like, <laughs> you know, like thoughts of dying and all these things. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Like I really did yeah. think I was losing it. Um, and I, you know, I started to really get into doing therapy again, journaling, doing my yoga practice every day, EFT tapping, like things that really bring me joy. And even though there was a part of me that's like, there was a part of me that was saying, I don't even want to do this healing work anymore. It was almost like a rebellion that was coming out. Mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. probably anger that comes with the, the, mm -hmm. the death of the ego, um, it's the, the stages of the grief that we experience when the yeah. ego dies. So I felt like angry. I felt like I've been doing so much work for the past seven years, like my spiritual journey and this and that. And then, and then I get this, you know, it, like a, like a part of me was like fighting. A part of me was like, I, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't even want to heal. Screw it. I want to stay here, you know, but yeah. obviously I don't want to do that. I want to grow. <laughs> but the other part of me, like the shadow side of me was very pessimistic. And I saw a side of me that I was like, Oh, that does that doesn't sound or look like the Yasmin I know. Mm -hmm. That don't <laughs> like, serve me. That nobody, don't serve. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's not that's not the Yasmin that I'm familiar with. And people don't know that side of Yasmin, like that pessimistic, like screw this. I hate life. I hate everyone. 
we can just say it fuck it all <laughs> yeah. I've been there literally yep. yeah that's literally what I said I was like you know what fuck this shit I can't do this I'm not doing this <laughs> period you know and um but then the, the other part of me is like oh but you know this yoga practice will do me some good so <laughs> yeah. this will feel good afterwards this will be during exactly yeah. like I just have to push through that initial resistance that I kept feeling that resistance and I still feel that resistance you know mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it comes up and it's like that's the self-sabotage but I've con- I've come to this point where I'm like what a ride that has been you know what I mean like and I'm still not fully out of this awakening mm-hmm. I will say I still have moments where I ebb and flow of like a lot of fear or if I'm, you know, I'm doing something for my job, like I start to get the self-sabotage, self-sabotage thoughts come up and that resistance of like, this isn't worth it. Like, I'm not going to do it. You know, like mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. like just a lot of underlying fear. And um, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to push through this because I know that that's not true. My thoughts are not, you know, that doesn't define me. And that's not necessarily true. Like, yes, we are experiencing the thought, but that's not who we are. Like, becoming the observer of that is what's really important during this journey. And that's the lesson. Ultimately, that is the lesson that I'm learning more than anything. It's understanding that these thoughts of like, I don't want to live anymore. It's just a thought. It doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that we have to act on it. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's true. It doesn't mean that, you know, like we resonate with that. It just simply means it's a thought and it will pass just like everything else in life. You know, everything else, every life is constantly changing it's constantly shifting. And if we can learn to understand that and surrender to that and detach from, from those, from those situ from those thoughts and situations, like life becomes so much easier because it's not about, you know, escaping things or right. not right. having those thoughts at all, you know, but it's more about considering that they're there, knowing that they are, but still choosing to move past that and, and still choosing to, Um, you know, not allow that to become this like wall, this barrier that stops us from achieving our goals. Mm -hmm. Sounds of New York. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I'm just like, I wish I could turn that off. (laughs) Nope. Nope. (laughs) Right in front of the hospital too. Can't do it in New York. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love it. Um, Just makes it all the more real for people, you know? Yes. Um, So I, I don't know if you mind sharing, but was it February that we, cause it was before I moved to Denver. Um, and I don't think it was in March. I think it was like maybe end of end or mid February when we did the intuitive healing. And that was actually the session that I was like, I, I even asked you like, what do people call this? What do we call this? Yes. Right. <laughs> cause, right. Cause I come from the Christian background where it's like, it's yeah. all prophetic or words of knowledge or words of wisdom or whatever. But right. I kind of have this unique ability to drop in with you um, in an intuitive healing session and see what you see. And, and I didn't know that that wasn't like a thing. (laughs) That was so amazing. I remember that night. You mind sharing? Oh, I would love to share. Yes, absolutely. That night was just mind blowing. Cause I remember we both cried (laughs) during the session. Yeah. Um, but that was that really like, and I still remember that session to this day. I will say, I even like mentioned it to Brad the other day. That was so it was beautiful. deep. It was really it was deep. so deep. Yeah. So beautiful. Um, yeah. I'm yeah, not going to share. Was, I'll let yes, you share. Yes. Yes. I mean, like you can, you can, of course, you know, share whatever parts, you know, you want to share, but <laughs> yeah, I, I just felt like I needed to see that. Um, because when I came to during that time, I, I felt really disconnected from God. And that mm-hmm. was why I was like, I need answers. I need some sort of clarity, you know, like I need, I need that connect, that that connection again. Like I, I just feel so empty. I feel so lost. And while we were doing that session and you told me that, you know, um, that when I saw my grandpa in the session and even you saw it too, and you were the one that actually had pointed that you pointed it out originally. Cause I didn't, you know, I didn't even think about him being my grandpa. I was just like, who's the old man that came up in, in the, in the vision. Who's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Who's coming up. Like, and why is it an old man? Like, who does that represent? Um, and it was so precise because when you told me, did you, you know, do you have like a grandfather? Like, is he alive? And I'm like, no, he passed. And you're like, oh, well that might have been your grandfather. And I'm like, you're right. 
because he even looked like him in the vision, mm-hmm. you know, and like mm-hmm. the whole, the hair and like the hunched over. And I was like, mm-hmm. even the, what he was wearing was something that my grandpa mm-hmm. would, would have worn. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, okay, this is, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. This blew me away because I just didn't know. I didn't know how to put everything together. You know, like I needed, I had to process that for like weeks after because I was just so like, wow, that's crazy. And he is my guardian angel. And I do feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, funny story. I actually saw an orb the other day and on my wall. Yeah. In my, in my living room. Mm-hmm. And I felt like that was definitely like my grandpa for sure. Cause I was like, Oh, my angel is here. And he's like telling me that he's protecting me and things are mm-hmm. okay. All is good. All is on the right path. Everything's happening, happening in divine timing. I'm, I'm, I'm guided. I'm protected. Um, and I was gonna, I was, I waited cause I wanted to tell you this today. <sighs> But Not yes, cry. It, was, it was perfect timing because I was like, oh my God, I literally <laughs> just saw an orb. It was beautiful and white and so circular. It was perfect. And I was like, I've never seen this before. Wow. The fact that I even saw it, and literally this was like four days ago. I was just like, oh my goodness. Like I'm in a dream right now. Like this is such a gift. It's truly such a gift when you get to this place of like, you know, you're, you begin to surrender and you begin to be open to the gifts that come up in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, you start to really feel this gratitude and you start to see things in such a different light and you're like, oh my, and then everything starts connecting, you know, like all the pieces start coming together. And that made me think of our, our reading and our healing session. And I was like, oh my God, Whitney's amazing. (laughs) You know, my favorite part about that though, of your grandpa coming. So basically in the vision, I can, I'm like right behind you because I can see the top of your head. And I noticed something coming up on the left and I'm like, Hey, so somebody's approaching, you know, like, do right. you see that? Look, go ahead and look left and you go ahead and look left and you describe him. And that's exactly what I'm saying. He comes and sits on the bench next to you. My favorite part is that he brought you into his chest. Yes. And I was like, go ahead and lean into that. And, right. and you just like leaned in and it was just like this beautiful moment between the two of you that it was like you got to feel that again of like I'm I'm held like I'm not just seen and heard but I'm being held right now where I'm at and there's no shame there's no condemnation there's no judgment criticism from an ancestor from your grandpa you know who takes great pride in you um and it was like oh the just the unconditional love and support (laughs) <laughs> I love you oh that was that was so beautiful got me to, I was just bawling when, when that happened I was like oh my god <laughs> so intense. <laughs> it was like all the all the feels it was for sure um, literally yeah I was choking I was trying not to not to cry and like blubber while I'm <laughs> walking I know, but, at, <laughs> but at that point we both started like just blubbering when I saw little me that was huge too that part really like ripped me open. Cause I was just like, Oh my goodness, that little girl, that little girl mm-hmm. needs like love support, you know, like she needed to be seen. She needed to be heard. And that was so healing for me. You have no idea like what that did for me with mm-hmm. like, it really truly did. Like that session was like exactly what I needed at that time. Cause yeah. I was just in the throes of <laughs> darkness. Like I could not see the way out. I'm, I'm now at that point where I do see the way out, you know, there's a lot more light, there's more clarity. Yeah. There's still fear. And I still like go in and out of the dark tunnel, but there's more clarity. And now I'm seeing the progress and I'm seeing Mm -hmm. myself move forward. But Mm -hmm. back in February, I was like, this is so intense. I can't see it. You know, I can't see the good. I'm still in the darkness. I can't even, I'm not, I don't even feel creative. I can't even do anything for my work, you know? And like, I don't even feel like helping anyone or being of service to the world because I, I don't even know what I want. I don't even feel like myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that was just like, I needed that. I needed that so, so badly. That was like the best birthday present ever because it was like my birthday month. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, had, I had just like celebrated my birthday and I was like, oh, I really need like <laughs> need some, 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 some. Or a little, yeah. a little, a little present. <laughs> <laughs> little song, 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 song. Um, also, what was really significant in that session was all of a sudden you saw blue butterflies. Yes. A they lot were everywhere. Butterflies. They were all blue. 
they were all it was just overload and i think you saw it it was like a burst of Mm -hmm. of blue butterflies that was my vision like they're everywhere (laughs) and there were so many she just made that happen (laughs) literally i was just like oh my god so many blue butterflies and like where is this coming from and then i looked it up one (laughs) yes exactly it's a lot it's like an obvious like hello transformation (laughs) everywhere you look you're gonna see all blue butterflies (laughs) there ain't gonna be anything else that you see right now oh yeah that's literally god telling me like do you see it now do you see it and like we looked it up yeah we, we looked, looked it up, up and it yeah. was like crazy around metamorphosis transformation but the color blue and the meaning of that of healing reviving restoring you know renewing just all of that around shedding the yeah. process yes is shedding the old becoming new again it was so cool it was, it was so right on beautiful so so beautiful I was like I so needed this and I like even cried I think that night I cried because I was like oh, back at 21 when I thought I had my first dark night I didn't have what I have now you know yeah. I didn't have the support system yep. I didn't have the spiritual tools I was just opening the door to spirituality at that point yeah you know I was still pretty lost in the sense of like I like yes I believed in God and I had a connection to God through religion though yeah. it wasn't because I grew up with that you know I grew up in a yeah. Catholic household and also like my dad's Muslim. So like I grew up with like two major religions and Mm -hmm. learning about both. But like my mom's side was obviously like more prominent um, because my grandpa from my mom's side was he was a priest. So, you know, like there was there was definitely a deeper connection that I felt with that. And growing up, you know, going to church when I was a kid sometimes and like, you know, understanding both sides of the religion. Yeah, I knew that I, you know, had a connection to God. I knew that God existed to me, a higher power existed. I just didn't know how to connect to God in my own way, in my own special way, you know? And at 21, when I, when I had my first dark night, that's when I started to learn about spirituality. And I opened myself up to like the, the, you know, the opportunities and the other tools and things that are available to us that help us grow and become better people and that are great tools, you know, to help you understand yourself and get more in tune with your intuition. And ultimately that's what I wanted. And at that point I had, I had no friends that were in that, on that path, you know, like I had, I had to start from scratch completely. Um, and I, and I did, I, I did all the, like all the meditations I did, you know, in my first natal chart reading, I did tarot. I did I literally, I tried it all and some things resonated more than others, of course, but like, I tried it all. And I was like, this is so fascinating. Like, I love this stuff. It brings me so much joy. And I loved astrology from the, from the day I like learned about it. And I was like, this brings me so much joy. And from that point, I started to like really meet, you know, soul tribe members. You know, I have like a few friends still from that time period that I met that I'm still friends with. They're like older sisters to me, you know, and mother figures. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, wow, this is, this is what it, what it means to be on the path. This is what it means to be in alignment with your specific path, because that was my specific path back then. And at this point, I'm like, wow, I feel so grateful because now I have the tools available to me and I'm only going deeper into this journey, yeah. you know, like, which yeah. is, and I already have the foundation. I already, I have yeah. my friends. I created my, you know, I found my soul tribe and like exactly when you guys came into the picture, like this was perfect timing, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I needed you guys right now. You know, I needed you right now during this time period. And I like, I, I get really choked up and emotional about that now, you know, because I'm just like the way things happen and and we don't realize that in the moment. But then when we start reflecting on that, those time periods, we're like, wow, how that all worked out, how divine timing just like happened. And, you know, again, we don't, when we're in the middle of the shit storm, it's really hard to see it. But Mm -hmm. after we're we're out of it or when we're walking and coming out of it, we're like, wow, that all just happened. And that Mm -hmm. was really helpful. That needed to happen. Mm -hmm. I think when we trust the process, we realize how supported we are. Yeah. Um, And that gratitude, you know, is really, I think, instrumental. And also you coming out of that dark phase, that pessimistic phase, because all of a sudden you're, you're being so grateful for the support of just even the connection that you feel with God or the people that you got surrounded with and the things that happened. And it was a constant reminder. You saw blue butterflies like all the time, like they were popping up everywhere. 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 And you're like, look, look at the <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and we're sending a blue butterfly emoji yes, like, yes! 
<laughs> and the angel so cool. numbers, so much of that too, like along yes. with the blue butterflies, I was like, and I still see them all the time. The angel numbers, you know, I want a time period where I didn't see them like the past, like three years or so I wasn't really mm-hmm. seeing them, but the first dark night, I saw them a lot when I was mm-hmm. like going through my breakup with my ex and stuff. Of course, that was all part of it. And then now I'm seeing them a lot again. So I was like, okay, so I'm being like, this is just my angels reminding me, guiding me, like telling me that I'm on the right path. Things are working out. Like they might not seem like it right now, but things are working out and things are going to be okay. You just have to keep going, keep trusting and keep doing, you know, even if there's resistance, even if you don't want to keep going. Yeah. You'll get there. You are a relationship coach. And so I feel like this question just popped in my head. Brad is a very unique, very wonderful individual, uh, fellow cancer. Hey, um, but <laughs> he's, he's love listening to this. <laughs> uh-huh. he, he's a wonderful guy. He's so supportive, but for those who are experiencing something similar and they're also in a relationship, what's your advice for them as far as bringing your partner in and along because it is a very vulnerable space and very difficult and very heavy. And oftentimes I know me, I like spare people (laughs) from the details, but that oftentimes puts a wall or something between you and that person Mm -hmm. or persons Mm -hmm. and they can feel that. So it can often be misconstrued or translate differently to them on the other side of the wall fence. So how did you navigate that being in a relationship and how did you bring him into your process and everything you were going through? Yeah. So that's a really good question because it's so funny you say that. Cause I have, um, a friend who she's going through a dark night also. And it started like a couple months ago for her and she's married and she has kids and all that stuff. So obviously she's in a place of like, it's a lot harder. Um, it feels harder for her, but she said that she feels like all of a sudden her husband feels like a stranger to her. And I asked her, I was like, why, well, what's coming up? Is it like, is the, is the relationship unhealthy? Like what's happening in that dynamic? And she's like, no, everything's fine. He feels really connected to me. I just don't feel as connected to him. And I said, well, you're also going through your own process right now and you're shedding a lot. So you're in a place of like a little, you're literally in a cocoon right now. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to honor that. And if he is able to accept that and be with you during those time periods and know that you are, you're going to be a little bit more detached, you're going to feel a little bit weird, you're going to have your moods and you're going to have things come up for you. If he's able to really hold that space for you, then that's wonderful. And if not, then you know exactly, you know, what that relationship entails. And I know that that's really hard and it hurts, but sometimes we need to have those things happen to us so we can see clearly, is this person really my ride or die? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, is this person really going to be in my life when shit hits the fan? Because that's the reality is we are going to have moments in life where shit hits the fan. You know, we are going to go through loss and grief and, you know, like tragedy and and situations that might not be really great and really fun to go through. And we need, and if we have a relationship and we want a partner who supports us, we need to make sure that that person is in it for the long run, for the ride. Mm -hmm. Like you are in this for the ride. You're in this for the intensity of it. And you're going to, you're, you're going to support me and have my back in any way that feels suited. Um, so for me personally, like my first dark night, my ex-boyfriend was not as supportive. So I, I, I know what that feels like. That difference between Brad now and my ex is, you know, with my ex, like it was really difficult because he wasn't on that path of like expansion, not, not just that, but he also wasn't open-minded to what I was going through. You know what I mean? Like I didn't really necessarily care that he wasn't into like what I was into or that he wasn't going through a dark night or, or spiritually growing, but that ended up really creating a wedge in the relationship because Mm -hmm. as I was expanding and growing, he was kind of like going in the opposite direction. And it was just like, I, I started to really notice the difference in the vibration between us, you know? And I was like, Mm -hmm. Whoa, I, I'm not, I'm clearly not stopping from growing. I'm clearly going like in that direction. He's going in that direction and we're not, you know, we're not on the same page anymore. Um, and he didn't know how to handle the emotions that came with the dark night that I was having. It was a very intense time period. Mm -hmm. I was crying a lot. I was super sensitive, ultra sensitive. Anything he said or did was a trigger to me. Like I felt very insecure because I was like, I was growing. I was in a time period where I was so confused. I didn't know who I was. 
And, you know, if he like talked to another woman, it made me really, really, really jealous, really possessive. And I got really like insecure about it um, more than I would normally get, you know, insecure. And I was like, oh my God, this is so intense. And he doesn't, he doesn't understand it. And that's okay. I'm not here to force him to understand it, but I, I knew that I had to make a choice. I knew that at that point I was like, this is not someone I want to spend the rest of my life with. This is not someone that is going to be able to really handle the intensity of my emotions and who I am, because yeah. that's who I am. I'm a sensitive being. And yeah, I do have intense emotions and I do feel things on a very deep level. And if my partner can't see that or can't hold space yeah. for that, then this is not going to work. You know, it's just not, it's not going to go in the right direction. And yeah. usually what, when that happens, it's because that person can't handle their own intensity, their own mm -hmm. emotions, you know? So if mm -hmm. they can't do that for themselves, if they're not on a path of personal development and growth in their own way, then it's going to be really hard for them to understand what you're going through, especially a dark night of the soul, which is something yeah. that I find to be a really complicated situation to even explain to people, you know, like that's something that like, if you're telling someone, oh, I'm going to a dark night of the soul and they have no idea what that is, they're like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> what is a dark night? <laughs> but people like who get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean Batman? <laughs> <laughs> like, which movie? <laughs> With, that needs to be a meme. I need to make a meme of that. <laughs> Not Instagram, seriously. But yeah, it's like, if people don't know what that is, they can't support you you know, but, and, and if, especially if they've never gone through it themselves, um, Brad's a very different person because he is very, very empathetic. He obviously mm -hmm. being a cancer, you know, being a water sign, you know, that he feels things very, very deeply. And even if he doesn't understand what I'm going through, cause he's never been through a dark night of the soul. And we've talked about this and stuff. And he's like, is hard. yeah, he, he's <laughs> like, I've never, I've never gone through that, but Hey, I know what you're going through is intense. And I'm here, I'm here right by your side. And I was like, that's all. Uh -huh. I don't need you to be, you know, side by side in the dark night with me. Like, honestly, I prefer you not do that because one of us has to be grounded and sane. So. <laughs> we got to take turns here. We can't do that. <laughs> like that's part of the contract. We've got to take turns. So yeah, it's like, it's really nice to have someone who just wants to be there. You know, it, I really, mm -hmm. it, it really does come down to like the person needs to want to be there mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to handle this and to be able to hold space for you. Yeah. Cause it doesn't give you license as the person who is going through something to mistreat someone or yeah. to not value them or yeah. um, to not respond out of love or kindness. Obviously we all, all have our moments, right? But I'm talking like intentionally, like intentionally yeah. giving them shit because you feel shitty. And that's, exactly. that's someone who needs more healing. Um, right. <laughs> but so I know like that definitely wasn't like a dynamic in your relationship. Cause if it was, then it probably would have ended. But I think when you bring them into it, you do it in a way that you're clearly communicating and, right. um, and asking for their support, letting them know that their support is wanted, needed. Um, right. and this is how you can support me. I think, especially for, you know, that's so important is telling them sure. how they can support you. Right. Um, cause everyone's Agreed. different and everyone's unique. And sometimes Agreed. you're going through a process and like, you don't want to hang out maybe as often, but getting little love notes or flowers or just something like, you know, something saying like, Hey, even though we're not hanging out as much or whatever, I love you, know. you and I care about you. Exactly. Yeah, I'm here for you. Yes, exactly. It's that reminder. And I love that you said that because I think setting those boundaries is so important when you're going through a time period like that, like letting that person know, like, I want some space. I want some alone time right now. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to be with you or it doesn't mean that, you know, yeah. I'm like trying to run away from the relationship. I, I just am going through a process that I need that space to like be with myself and, and go inwards, you know? So that's really important. Knowing how to, how to communicate during this time period is huge and where to set the, the, the right boundaries that resonate with you. Yeah. So let's flip it for the person that is the, the supporter of yeah. their partner that is going through it. What were some things that maybe Brad did that really helped you? Like maybe things that he said or did or ways that he responded. How were yeah. those, those helpful to you? So on my birthday, it was, it was, it, it was so helpful because we did, we, we had a little staycation. I loved it. it was a, I loved yes, it. Yes. I remember with the robe. It's so the robe. It was, 
I saw so much of Brad's thigh. I was like, I oh, told him oh. I told him that I was like, babe, you're showing off too much. You're showing off your goodies too much. Everyone on Instagram is seeing your goodies. But yeah, it's, it was such a fun time. I just we love really that he robed it up with you. He, yes, I just love you see, that. Like, it, little things like that. That's exactly one thing I was going to bring up. It's just like the fact that he even, he was like, oh, I'm doing that with you. Like, screw it. It's your birthday, but I, I'm going to rope it up with you. We're going to have a really good time. And we did. I was like, I, I, I was feeling really dark that day. Like, I was honestly like, mm. it was hard for me to fully, fully be present and enjoy my 27th birthday. I will say that. Like, this was a hard, <laughs> hard birthday this year. But he made it so much lighter and so much easier because we literally watched YouTube videos about the dark night of the soul. Like, oh my gosh. that's what we did. He bought, like, on his laptop, we were just, like, watching videos. He brought his laptop and he's like, here like you want to look anything up we could watch something together and I was like yeah I, I want to watch some stuff about dark night of the soul it's like do you want to join like if, if you don't that's okay I just I don't want to force you into something and he's like no I want to learn more about this like this is I want to know how to support you you know so his his desire to even want to learn to even want to be a part of this meant the world to me because it's like again you don't have to do that but you wanted to learn what is this what is this about like what does this entail and doing little things like that and really made my day. He like, he, he cooked for me, you know, like he made a mm. meal for me. It was just like, he's like, today's your birthday. He made me some tea. You know, we just talked, we talked. He like gave me a massage. So little things like that, it all added up and it all made me feel like, wow, you see me and you understand me and you love me and care about and care about me and you want me to feel good. And yeah. that, that was enough you know, like I didn't need anything else. Like I was just like, this is more than enough. Like the fact that you even desire to be here with me right now and mm -hmm. to help me, even though I'm like a complete and total emotional mess right now. And I have this dark, heavy cloud over me and it might be difficult energetically to be around me at the moment, but you still wanted to do that. And that mm -hmm. to me is effort. Lots of effort. So for the person who is experiencing yeah. <laughs> being the supporter, that's, that's a really good like yeah. tips of just being there, being present, yeah. um, asking how you can support. Right. And then, and then showing up and you're, I mean, anyone who's been in a relationship, even for a couple months, like you kind of know, like what that person likes and what sings to them and what doesn't. Right. And right. like everyone has different sets of love languages. And yep. so Brad is just like, hello. He just went on. <laughs> He went on a Yaz love fest. Everything this girl loves, we're doing it. Yeah, exactly. I love that. He's like, I'm, I'm so open to that, you know? So Way to did. go, Brad. Yes, Win. a shout out to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a radio station. Shout out to Brad. <laughs> shout out to Brad. <laughs> oh, yes, it. he did. He was, he was just so helpful. And, you know, again, that I was just like, wow, this is, this is everything and more like that's what made my birthday so special. You know, it's mm -hmm. the fact that the effort was put that he showed me that I'm here for you in a really challenging, difficult time period. I am here for you. Yeah. That means everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are some little golden nuggets from everything that you've experienced in this season? Are there any like real, like solid solid little nug nugs that like nug -nug. <laughs> that you're walking <laughs> I love how that hits you <laughs> you know me so well I do yeah <laughs> we know each other so well that's exactly. why we're, we're giggling over each other and my sense of humor is coming out way more than it usually does on a podcast episode <laughs> because I'm like I'm getting it out of you <laughs> um yeah any solid like little golden nuggets that are like things that you are excited to even share with people or things that, you know, somebody can maybe look forward to of like, when I go through this, I'm going to get these things that are so valuable to me. And like this happened for Yaz and this meant so much to her. So is there anything like that? Yeah. So I think for me, it's been more about the people that I've come across on this journey, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the things that the experiences that I've already had. Um, the sessions, the coaching sessions that I've done with like various people already, various coaches, like learning and, and growing through that, through people's stories. I think that to me is really like, that will get you through this time period. Like if, if mm -hmm. nothing gets you through it, it's just learning and listening to people's stories. Um, like that 
is something that I feel we all benefit from. Like we all mm-hmm. want to hear what other people are going through. Yeah. We want to hear it, you know, like we all can really appreciate a really good story from Tony Robbins. You know what I mean? Like if he tells yeah. us a story of like something that happened to him in his twenties, we're all going to be there sitting like, wow, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. That saved my life. You know, like we all can really get a lot from the stories that we hear from people. And that's why storytelling is so powerful and it's so yeah. huge. It's because like, yeah. it really touches your heart because it gives you hope too that if someone else got through a really, really rough, like rock bottom time period, you can get through it too. Even Mm -hmm. if it might not feel that way, even if it might feel really overwhelming, really intense, really dark, like you could also get through it and you can come out on the other side stronger than ever, you know, like the Phoenix rising from the ashes. Yep. That's really good. And I think too, because you're in such a place of it's all about you and everything that's happening with you and your life and where you're going and what you're dealing with, to come outside of yourself and connect in a way with someone else's story, something they're going through, I think also helps you to kind of reground in that sense and just realize you're not alone. And also there's more things outside of yourself than what's happening, right? Because this can feel so overwhelming. When you connect, you realize maybe not be as big of a deal. It's still very important and takes top priority, but there's more happening outside of yourself than absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then another thing that I I also want to say is change is constant, you know, and like when we think that we're in a dark place and this is going to be our reality forever, that's not true. That is just the ego mind. You know, that is just the, the, the monkey mind, the chatter in your head telling you, yup, that's it. This is it. You're going to be depressed for the rest of your life. You're just going to not want to live for the rest of your life. Like this is going to be a reality forever. And no, that's not true because literally three months ago, that wasn't my reality. You know what I mean? So look how quickly that day that I had that panic attack that morning, that was not my, my reality was very different, (laughs) you know? And then like that literally like seven hours later, that reality shifted for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, Mm -hmm. and then again, it could shift any second, any second Mm -hmm. things can shift and things could feel lighter. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow. You know, that's what, that's why miracles happen. You know, that's why that exists because like from one second to the next, something can shift. And it could be life-changing and yeah. you could feel like, oh my God, like I, I had no idea I was ever going to get out of that. I thought I was going to be in this dark place for the rest of my life. And I'm not, you know, like I, I came out of it and I came out of it stronger than ever. And that's a reminder that I can constantly remind myself when I feel like I'm in a place of overthinking. And when I spiral back into depressive thoughts and anxious thoughts, I'm like, wait, nope, this is oh. not my reality. Yeah. yeah, this is not where I'm going to be forever. This is just a temporary time period and it's teaching me a lesson and mm-hmm. I just need to get the lesson and get out. You know, that's the goal here is just understand the lesson, learn it, move through it and then teach other people what I've learned. So that's yeah. really what life is about. And then if we can like really remind ourselves of that and like get ourselves out of this dark place by thinking that, you know, change is constant and things always, always shift or seasons, mm-hmm. then we can really get through things. hmm I think it's really powerful. Um, From another guest, Danu Vino, one thing that he said that changed my perspective forever was the concept. It's the Eastern, you know, kind of very Hindu. Mm. I think it's very tantric as well. Comes from that culture and understanding of I'm not feeling and I am not like, I don't feel depressed and I am not depressed. Yeah. Depression is just moving through me, right? And I think that like set me free because I was that person who needed, I needed to attach to that because it felt so real and I wanted to validate it, but by wanting to validate and be, and feel validated from other people. So I switched saying, I feel depressed to, I am depressed because then I got a bigger reaction. People were like, Oh, you know, like, Whoa. wow, Um, and that felt great because I was like thank you for validating how I feel because I feel so low but I didn't realize I was empowering that yeah and so important that you said that oh my god wit thank you for saying that because I do fall in that too and the ego mind is tricky because it loves that it's like a pity party it loves that attention of like validate me and again of course we all want to be validated there's nothing wrong with that no, but it's just, it's just understanding that balance and being able to detach from it and not yes. giving your, 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 your identity is not 
depressed. Your identity is yeah. not anxious. You know, like yep. it is a, it is a, a feeling that is moving through you. Like you said, mm-hmm. that that's you're experiencing it. Yes, exactly. And it's a, it's just, it, it can be an experience for a short amount of time, you know? Yeah. And like, that's, that's really yeah. what it's about. And it will move through you. Yeah. So not attaching to it and, and remaining unattached from outcomes as well is probably a big part of the process that you've been in is not attaching to what you're feeling because it could change the next day. The next day you could feel totally fine. And then the next day you could feel like total shit and you're like, Oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. So it's like not attaching to that either one and remaining just open to the process. Bingo. Right. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what I've been learning. Like these past few weeks, I've literally, I literally thought about that yesterday. I forgot what I was doing. Probably watching a YouTube video. <laughs> Cause I'm always watching. <laughs> that's how I found Aaron yep. <laughs> on YouTube. Just like watching these YouTube videos. My and I was just bro. like, I love it. Aaron shout out. <laughs> he listens to this. <laughs> love your videos, man. Keep going. <laughs> but like, but like, yeah, I, I like, I thought about this yesterday and I was like, you know, it really is about neutrality. It really like, Mm -hmm. it's come down to that point because I attach myself to happiness too. And I attach myself to blissful moments, of course, because we all love feeling that. We all want that. We all want that to last forever. Absolutely. And then, and then like five hours later or six hours later, I'm like, wait, I feel like a wave of sadness or I feel like a wave of some certain emotion. And and then I get down on myself and it's almost like I, blame myself in a way of like Mm -hmm. what's wrong with you you were feeling happy a few hours ago why are you feeling this way you know it's like asking you like why why is this happening it's victim mentality Mm -hmm. so like I've learned to not get attached to the highs and the good the good either because just experiencing Mm -hmm. it and living it and being present with it and enjoying it for what it is and also being present with the not so good moments Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and knowing that they're there for a reason they're there to teach you something yeah I mean, think about it. What if we uh, held on to the fact that we feel gas <laughs> and we attached to the bloat and the, and the pain? <laughs> I mean, come on, it's temporary. We all know that gas is temporary, right? Literally. Oh my God. I freaking love you for saying that. You're so <laughs> right. So I'm, now I'm going to start thinking about that every time I feel a certain emotion. I just thought, got soul gas. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> spiritual <laughs> gas, flagellation. It's okay. I'll release it later. <laughs> I have spiritual gas. <laughs> oh, I love a good best. heart joke. Um, best. Oh my God. I needed to hear you that. You know, it's like, I mean, it's we got to think of it like that because it sometimes it's painful and it's like uncomfortable and you feel like everybody knows that you feel like a balloon at that moment. And, um, and I think like too, just with attaching to the good and the bad, it's just something like neutrality really is something that is just, it's, it's a practice. It's a ritual. It's not something to try to perfect. It's just bring, you know, bringing yourself back, like, you know, pilots that, pilot a plane they don't stay right on the line the right. plane moves from left to right high and low yeah. all the time they're constantly correcting and even exactly. the computer is constantly course correcting and so yeah. I think we just need to see it like that like it's a place of non-judgment and non-criticism and we have to understand like life throws whatever and our journeys our spiritual journeys our soul journeys throw us whatever we just need to understand sometimes you go through a really rough patch of clouds you know a little storm that's okay there's nothing that doesn't necessarily mean anything about your identity Mm. like something's wrong with you this is why you're going through this even shadow work it's just actually a part of the process it's a part of flying it's a part of being up in that altitude right Right. is that you're going to experience certain things maybe even a little bit more intense sure but this too shall pass and course correcting just bringing yourself back to that place of neutrality and balance always and that's just a part of life and um I wanted to ask you said what Thank you. I love that. Yeah. I had to do something pass. after the gas comment. I had to make, you know, I had to make up for that. <laughs> oh, but, Beautiful way to make up for it. <laughs> but um, I, wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what were some really key things that helped you like rituals or just practices that helped you in this moment to navigate that and to bring yourself back into neutrality, back into balance? So for me, grounding, a lot of grounding, because I've been 
up here in my head way too much lately. And I know that about myself. I'm naturally an overthinker. I'm naturally mm -hmm. very analytical, very much mind. Everything's in the mind. Um, and I'm, I'm always, I've always been like that. That's my personality. Uh, it's my stellium in the third house. <laughs> to say it but there you Aquari go. Uh, Aquarius stellium um for anyone who like knows astrology y'all know how <laughs> Aquarius is all up here in the head so mm -hmm. yeah for me it's really difficult because it's like I I'm constantly in mental stimulation constantly and I and I love it I love being mentally stimulated but sometimes I go overboard <laughs> and then I'm like okay I'm anxious now like that was a lot now I yeah. have to go and like do something with my hands, like cooking or cleaning or working out. And one of the things that has helped me a lot is yoga. You know, like I mm -hmm. like I I go in and out with yoga. I like there yoga. was a time period where I was doing it a lot and then I just stopped and now I'm back on it again. And it really is grounding because not only am I moving, but I'm also breathing at the same time. So I'm mm -hmm. like making sure that my body is like in alignment. And connecting. Yeah, connecting yeah. exactly and feeling myself, feeling mm -hmm. like I am I am a 3D human being, you know what I mean? And I'm like here on this earth, I'm on this planet. Um, and I'm like, I'm making moves, you know. So feeling that way, feeling like you're being productive with your body, that's really, really helpful. So that a lot of grounding, like go, just going on a walk in the park, that has helped me a lot. Like more mm -hmm. than anything, I think that practice has been really important because when I get super caught up in my head, I'm like, nope, I'm just gonna change the course of this like thinking and just go out and like take a walk. And that completely shifts my mentality, completely shifts the way I think about things, how I see things. Um, and it does, it helps, it really does help. And another thing is journaling. You know, journaling mm -hmm. has also been like every night I journal and I've been journaling like my process from how, you know, I started to where I am now. And that helps me to like keep track of like what triggers me, what, you know, what makes me feel good or what happened that day that made me feel really happy, you know, and like kind of getting to know myself and as I move into this new identity. So that's been super helpful. And um, also tapping, tapping is really great. Mm -hmm. So EFT, EFT tapping. tapping. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's been really great. That's something new that I, I didn't do before. And like, I found it once I started to <laughs> have my panic attacks, like I was just, yeah. you know, desperately Googling and I came across EFT tapping and I knew about it. I just never resonated with it before. And then I was like, I'm doing this, I'm trying it. And it's great because it really helps me stay present. It really helps me like, you know, as I'm doing the tapping, the movements, I'm also saying these affirmations that make me feel good. And mm -hmm. I do feel emotion running through my body when I'm feeling tense or I'm feeling sad or something like that really helps me kind of come back <laughs> into my body and into this reality. So mm -hmm. those things have been the best tools for me personally. That's really cool. What I love about EFT tapping for those who don't know that's, that's listening is you're actually tapping on really specific parts of your head, your, yeah. your face. Um, and those are like literally like little pockets and, right. um, oh, energy, energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. little energy pockets. And so it's actually really specific, like where you tap. And so the fact that you're speaking something, which I think words are huge, like words have power and influence over right. our atmosphere, over ourselves. And so here you are tapping on specific meridians in your body and and then speaking things over yourself speaking life over yourself or you know um acceptance over your process and over a thought and a lot of the processes speaking what you're feeling and speaking what you're thinking mm -hmm. and so that negative and then saying but or instead I'm gonna this you know and so you actually exactly. kind of combat what you're feeling with the positive right. or with the life giving yes I love that because you're, you're acknowledging the, the, you know, the darker yes. thoughts and the negativity that you're having. You're not just so like connecting with that. It. Yes. Yep. You're connecting with it. And then you're like, okay, but I'm going to change it. I'm switching yeah. it now. You know, Let's you're letting it. your body know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's Dr. Special. Caroline Leaf actually, she, before she became what she is today, she's pretty big today, yeah. but she was, she was sort of known in the Christian world. And she, um, went on a talk show with Joyce Meyer, who's like a pretty well-known female, um, preacher teacher in the Christian community. And I happened on her videos 
of talking about how you can actually transform your mind. Like it's an actual physical chemical process. Right. And, and I had no idea. And I used that because I had just gotten my heart broken for the first time with my first love. Um, I even felt like I had miscarried because I had seen our kid, like our future kid in a vision. And so it was like crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. But I had so much trauma from it and it like that bit of, of basically renewing your mind of, of bringing that memory or bringing what it is that you're feeling or you're thinking to, to the forefront and acknowledging it and feeling valid. Like I am validly feeling or thinking this way or having this repressed memory or memory come up and it's overwhelming me. And then transmitting that. And for me, it was also in every single one of those moments, choosing to forgive him and forgive myself. Cause I had a lot of guilt and shame of like, you missed it. You're so naive. You're so ignorant. You're such an idiot. You're so stupid. Like, how could you fall for that? How could you not see that? Like rose colored yeah. glasses, right? I just got down on myself, which you can relate with. Cause that's everything you've also been feeling of like, why am I right. feeling this way? Like, I, yeah. Right. And we all can relate. So I think that's such a powerful process and that's part of EFT tapping. And so really you can do it in either way. If if EFT tapping feels funky to you, it's just even bringing that thought or that emotion to the forefront and then choosing to forgive and let go, forgive yourself, forgive that person, whatever it is, just choosing to let go, to honor it, but to let it go and move forward. And that actually can change the chemical process around that memory. That's crazy. I love that though. I love that that's the case. And I love that that's Mm -hmm. so mainstream now because I've been seeing so much about EFT tapping, like a lot, so much more than I did in the past five years, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. now it's like coming to the forefront and like, it's such an easy practice too. Like you could just do it for five five to 10 minutes, you know, and and have an issue. Yeah. And it's quick. It's to the point, And it just, it does make a difference. Like I do feel better after I mm-hmm. feel like, Oh wait, I didn't move some energy. I didn't move some stuff that was stagnant or sitting there for a while. Mm-hmm. So important. Yeah. It's powerful, powerful stuff. And if we can do that and commit to that, then we can see changes. And even if we don't see changes immediately, we will see them down. The you line. will mm-hmm. down the line. Your future self is going to be, you know, really, really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> like it, like that version of yourself is going to look back and say, wow, I am so glad I did not give up. I am mm-hmm. so glad that even though I wanted to give up on this healing journey, that even though I was overwhelmed and just didn't want anything to do with personal development or growth or spirituality, I still continued and I did it, you know, and I went through it and I did what I had to do. And I'm at this point now where I feel amazing. And I feel like I wouldn't be here if, you know, that past version of me didn't do the things that, um, I was called to do. So. All right. So next question for you, chick, you ready? ready. (laughs) What's next? (laughs) What's coming up for you, girl? What are you putting out? What are you doing? What are you dropping on us? (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) oh my goodness. So yes, like I said earlier, I, um, I had a lot, you know, prepared, (laughs) to drop in January. And then like, obviously that, that timeline kind of switched over. So I was like, whatever, not the right, not the time anyway, like this will come out when, when the time's right. And so I trusted in that. And now I'm at this place where I'm like really excited because I am working on two different projects and my first project and like, like obviously like my passion, my baby, my, my first love is my podcast. I am creating a community around that. Um, I want it to be a place where people can feel seen, can feel heard, where conscious conversations can happen, um, where people can meet their soul tribe, kind of like how I met mine. Uh, Mm -hmm. I want people to feel that. I want people to feel that connection. I want people to feel that sense of community, especially right now with, with, with what we're going through. I think it's important that we have these like specific spaces where we can really connect with people and resonate and be on that same page and the same wavelength. So I am so excited because that's going to be a thing. Humanity Feels is getting a a little upgrade. So I'm excited about that. Just like I'm in this place of transformation. So is the podcast. Love it. (laughs) And I can't wait to have you on there, Wit, because it's going to be a fun conversation. We're going (laughs) to have a really good time there too. Um, So I'm really excited about that. That's in the works. And that's currently, um, you know, like I'm birthing that, that project right now. So I'm really excited that's going to be happening in the next month or two months or so. Like that's what I'm planning. 
And then my second project is I have created my own jewelry line. So I am really excited about that. <laughs> all these, all these projects that bring me love, joy and life. Um, and it's called Studio Manifest. So I'm going to have little rings and earrings and necklaces. <gasps> All that I can't wait. Stuff. I know. I can't <laughs> wait to send you some of the pieces. I'm so excited. This is this has been something I've been thinking about for a while now. I just never knew how to, you know, put it into action. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found a really cool warehouse that like takes care of all that stuff. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, I love that this stuff exists. You know, it makes it so easy for people to just do this stuff and bring their visions to life. You know. Yeah. So I am really excited about that. That's gonna be really really big um and I plan on doing a lot with that I plan on like collaborating with people and working with people hand in hand hopefully bringing that and my podcast together somehow you know like <laughs> I'll find a way but um yeah that's what's happening those are the two main things I'm working on and I'm I'm really really grateful and really excited for that so exciting yes. <laughs> because as you wear this stuff as you wear this beautiful, gorgeous, I already know it's going to be amazing jewelry, you're reminded, right? These are going to be uplifting pieces that are going to help yeah. people to realign with like whatever they want to manifest, whatever they want to attract into their life. Exactly. So exactly. So cool. Yes. Yes. I love, thank you. I love you. I can't wait. I'm, I can't wait. I, a lot coming. So I'm really excited for that. So exciting. I, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, you're amazing. And it's funny because with these things, I noticed that resistance that comes up, you know? So I'm like, ah, interesting how the ego likes to, <laughs> likes to sneak in. So for everyone listening, like if you're, if you're working on a project or you're, you know, in this place of transformation as well and moving into a place where you're creating and doing and like moving past the limitations, your ego is going to try to sneak up. <laughs> Yep. It's going to try to hold you back and say, nope, don't do it, you know, and it's going to try to self-sabotage. So just be, be aware of that. And cause that's something that I'm currently being aware of too. So, mm, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on the Solish podcast again. Thank you, Wynn. <laughs> I had an amazing time. Thank oh. you. Thank you for having me and for holding space, for listening, for being you as always. I love you. You are <laughs> such a light. And I'm so grateful for you. Like, and I'm always constantly going to be reminding you that I'm grateful for you and for who you are and what you bring to this world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Likewise, yeah. you're like the, <laughs> the beautiful little lava lamp, you know, that just constantly is morphing around and changing and being funky, funky and fun. You're just like, oh you're the God. best, but you're a light, man. All the I colors. love you. Oh, I love you so much. It's the Aquarius stellium. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> I said that like three times. I, I think it. people are going to be like, this This Aquarius okay. stellium girl, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's all about the stellium. She, she's <laughs> <laughs> so That's funny. her place of like pride, clearly. <laughs> She's identifying. She needs to unattach. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you. Oh, I love you so too, cool. Win. Thank you. Oh. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs>